So as promised, I presented a model in which there's a funding advantage to debt and no restrictions on issuance. In the model, as in the data, collateral is a primary determinant of leverage and firm valuation. But the broader takeaway message that goes beyond this specific model is that all capital structure tests suffer from a joint hypothesis problem. In particular, they combine a capital structure theory regarding the primary drivers of leverage, such as tax benefits and distress costs, or information asymmetries, with some imperfect commitment technology. Imperfect because we know with perfect commitment, we could avoid default altogether and use up to 100% that financing, which is not what we observe in practice. Collateral is one natural and low-cost solution to the non-exclusivity problem. For this reason, collateral will have value and will be scarce, encouraging its optimization and even its reuse. That is, collateralized debt may itself serve as, serve as collateral in other transactions. That said, there may sometimes be trade-offs in the use of collateral as well. And in any case, once a firm has exhausted its collateral, it may seek other commitment mechanisms. Other commitment mechanisms we observe include, for example, seniority provisions. These help to reduce but do not eliminate the non-exclusivity problem, remaining vulnerable to asset sales, future security interests, maturity rat races. Restrictive covenants, which limit the amount and timing of future debt issuance, are also valuable, but of course reduce the firm's operational and financial flexibility. Relationship banking can be viewed as a commitment mechanism by committing to the same lender the firm mitigates the non-exclusivity problem, but suffers from reduced competition between creditors. And reputation building can be important. For example, a commitment to maintain a certain credit rating could be quite valuable. Private equity firms can also maintain a funding advantage based on their reputation for handling leverage, as emphasized in recent work by Malenko and Malenko. But again, reputations may be slow to establish and can be fragile ex post. Finally, external frictions that impede debt issuance, such as regulation or transactions costs, may also play a positive commitment role. But as we think about these other mechanisms, one thing that remains clear is that path dependence is inevitable. In particular, empirically, context will matter. Firms will choose an ex-ante optimal commitment mechanism based on some initial context, but then will suffer the, from ex post rigidities that appear suboptimal in the future. And in our theoretical work, we need to be explicit about the commitment mechanisms that underlie our results which are often embedded in assumptions we may make for tractability, such as one period debt or risk-free debt, one class of debt, refinance requirements, transactions costs, et cetera. Yet these will all have a first order impact on our results uh, and our, on our predictions due to the commitment role that they may play. 